Malaria is a protozoa of the Apicomplexa or the Sporozoans. There are four main species that affect humans, one of which can kill, which is Plasmodium falciparum, and three other species, Vivax, Ovali and Malari, which on the whole don't kill. There's also another one called Noll's Eye, which has been found in the Philippines, but we haven't seen it much here in the UK. To make the malaria films for the quickest diagnosis, still the gold standard, is to make thick and thin films. For that, we need an EDTA blood, which is an anticoagulated blood, um, but an EDTA is better for making the parasites and for making the films than any other sort of anticoagulant. You could also use a finger prick and make a thin and a thick from the finger prick. Open carefully. We're performing this in the class 1 cabinet because of course there may be viruses or um, other parasites so everything is performed in the class 1 cabinet. Take a drop of blood, put it on the slide and then we're going to make a thin film. The reason for using a thin film is because you get at one layer thick and then it's easier to fix the film and then you can look at the parasites and the shape and the size of the red cell. We're then also going to make a thick film. This one won't be fixed when we stain it. And for the thick film we use a bit more blood so it's thicker and then we're going to lyse the blood when we stain it so you can look for lower numbers of parasites and also then you can look for other stages or other species. Remembering of course that every time you make anything you will always label the films or the slides. The thin films which we made earlier, like this, will be stained here using a modified rapid fields method and then if it's found to be a non-falciparum we will also use a Giemser method. You'll find that Giemser is used in most laboratories. The rapid fields, modified rapid fields method that we use on the thin film is faster and gives us a quicker diagnosis. The, thin the thick film is stained using the normal fields method and takes very little time at all. All the films should be air dried and the thick film should be left for at least 10 to 20 minutes before staining occurs. For the thin film we're going to fix it and we usually fix it with methanol and we usually leave it for a minimum of 30 seconds fixing before we then try and stain it. So once it's been fixed for a minimum of 30 seconds you can tip off the methanol and then in the modified Fields B method we will use diluted Fields B diluted 1 in 4 followed immediately by Fields A which is neat. Mix it gently where there isn't any blood and then leave it for a minimum of a minute to stain. After the minimum of a minute staining you can leave it up to five sometimes it even gets left up to ten if you've forgotten it. Um, then wash it off using water. Wash it gently so that you don't actually wash the stain off as well. Then leave it and then place it upright in the rack to dry. The thick film we're not going to fix, so the thick film is stained differently. We're going to use neat field stain A and neat field stain B. And we're going to do three seconds in stain, water, stain, water. Then we're going to leave it to dry upright in that direction so that all the outside of the red cells can come down and you'll end up with a nice clear area to look at the top and all the rubbish will be at the bottom of the slide. So, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And again, place it upright in the rack to dry so all the outside of the red cells can come down. 
and leave a nice clear area to look at. So for the Giemser stain for the thin film, you would stain the Giemser 1 in 10 in buffer 7.2. Hematologists use 6.8. In parasitology, for malaria, you would use 7.2 and use the Giemser stain. The advantage of the Giemser stain is it shows the stippling better, it shows a slightly better colour of the parasites and a slightly better colour of the red cells. But the advantage of the rapid fields is it only takes a minute to stain and this takes half an hour to stain. So you can actually say at least there's malaria there before you have to go on to the long stain so the clinicians will have a quicker idea so they can get towards their treatment more quickly. When staining with Giemser, which we would always do for a non-falciparum, we have 9 mils of buffered water and it must be buffered at 7.2 pH. In haematology it's usually buffered at 6.8 but for malaria films it must be at 7.2. So I've got 9 mils of buffer, I'm going to take one mil of stain that was great mix it together and then use it immediately to stain the slide you can't use Giemser that has been made up for any length of time because it starts to deposit so always make it up fresh when you want to use it and it must stain for half an hour so normally at this point you would put on a, a a timer to let you know that to wash it off. Again, tap water can be used to wash it off in a half an hour's time. Under the microscope at the moment, we have a thin film. The magnification is the eyepiece is a times 10, and we have oil immersion at times 100 lens, which gives a thousand times magnification. We're looking at the red cells which are the grey circles and inside them you can see red dots with blue cytoplasm which is the nucleus and the cytoplasm of the parasite. The reason we're showing you this film is because the parasitemia is high. There are a lot of parasites. When you're doing a parasitemia you count the number of parasitized cells the parasitemia of this film is approximately 37%, which is a very high parasitemia. The stage you're looking at the moment is the ring form or the trophozoite stage. On a thick film, as you can see, you can just see the parasit parasites. You can no longer see the red cells that surround them. This makes them more difficult partially to visualise and definitely to speciate but you should still be able to do it from a thick film. So there's four species of malaria. Plasmodium falciparum is the one that is able to kill. There is some relevance not only in the number of parasites but the stages of parasites. The number of parasites, the parasitemia, and the stage of parasites will indicate to the clinician what sort of treatment to give. If there's a low parasitemia, very few parasites, then oral quinine may be indicated. With a higher number of parasites, intravenous quinine, or if there's a very high number of parasites, above maybe 15%, they might look to perform an exchange transfusion. With the advent of artemisinin drugs, um, this is less likely to happen. The other three species, Viavax, Ovali and Malari, are treated with chloroquine. They generally never get more than 2%, but you must also then treat with primaquine to get rid of the liver stages so that it doesn't come back. To assist with microscopy, there are also a number of immunochromatographic tests available. Um, which can be used um, to assist to, which can be used to assist a diagnosis. They are very good with falciparum, 
and they will also have a pan specific line which will pick up the other three species with varying degrees of sensitivity. The sensitivity of the immunogrammatographic tests normally go down to a very low parasitemia of 0.001%. An expert microscopist will go down to 3 noughts 1% and PCR is tenfold more sensitive again. But at the moment PCR, even real-time PCR, takes a minimum of a half day to do whereas the gold standard, your thick and, film, fil thick and thin film, should still be able to do within an hour of receipt of specimen.